What lies at the center of a black hole? You might imagine it as an infinitely dense point where a massive star collapse, what scientists call a singularity. But let's pause. Is it even correct to talk about the center of a black hole? When we map a black hole using something called a Penrose diagram, named after Roger Penrose, we see something extraordinary. Space and time become so distorted that their roles essentially swap. The singularity isn't a place in space. It's a moment in time, the end of time. But here's the thing. We don't fully understand the singularity. For years, scientists thought we had no tools to explore it. It seemed destined to remain a mystery for centuries. And then came a breakthrough. Scientists realized the problems weren't just at the singularity, they were also at the horizon, the event horizon of the black hole. In 1974, Stephen Hawking revolutionized black hole research. He showed that when you consider quantum mechanics near the event horizon, black holes aren't the eternal prisons we once thought. They glow, they emit particles, and they have a temperature. This is called Hawking radiation. Picture it like this. Near the event horizon, pairs of particles are constantly popping in and out of existence, what scientists call entangled particles. One of these particles might fall into the black hole while the other escapes into the universe. As the escaping particle carries energy away, the black hole loses energy and shrinks. Over time, this means the black hole will eventually disappear. But this raises a profound question. What happens to everything that fell into the black hole? Einstein's theory tells us that everything collapses into the singularity, the end of time. Yet one day the black hole vanishes. All that remains is Hawking radiation. Here's the puzzle. If you collect all the radiation, can you reconstruct the information about everything that fell into the black hole? Why is this important? Because in physics, information is conserved. Destroying information would violate the fundamental laws of nature. Even if you burn a book or incinerate an object, in principle, you could reconstruct it if you collected every particle, every photon, every quantum of radiation. But black holes seem to break this rule. They appear to erase information, leading to what's called the black hole information paradox. Now, the current consensus is that black holes don't erase information. In principle, you could collect all the Hawking radiation over a black hole's lifetime, feed it into a quantum computer, and reconstruct everything that fell in. The implications are mind-blowing. It hints at a deeper theory of gravity, a quantum theory of gravity. One exciting idea is that space and time themselves aren't fundamental. Instead, they might emerge from something even more basic, possibly quantum entanglement or some other underlying structure. We don't yet know what these smaller parts are, but the idea that space and time could emerge from something deeper is a major shift in our understanding of the universe. To truly understand the origin of the universe, or even answer whether the universe had a beginning, we must first understand the nature of space and time. And black holes are our best tools for investigating these questions. They force us to ask profound, sharply defined questions about the very fabric of reality. As Einstein once said, if you look at nature really carefully and keep pulling at the intellectual threads, you can glimpse something deeply hidden. Black holes are not just cosmic phenomena. They are windows into the deepest mysteries of the universe, building blocks of reality itself. If you enjoyed this dive into the mysteries of black holes, don't forget to subscribe to channel for more such videos.